All right. So we are reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 9. First epistle of St. John, chapter 3, and we are reading from verse 1 up to verse 9. And it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God? Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Behold, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he who manifested to take away our sin, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Wonderful Father, we thank you for this declaration of today. We thank you for the love that you have declared over us right now. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Father, who are we? Dust that you created to be called your own, to be called your children, you, God Almighty. You feel everything that we can think of and everything that we can't even imagine. You feel every space in all the galaxies, in all the seas. And yet, you say we are yours, we are your children. You give us your name. Lord, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you for this power. We thank you for this opportunity to be you because if we are children then we have the dna of our father we thank you for making us your own for blessing us and calling us your own and giving us your nature your dna lord help us to recognize this uh, mystery and to learn day by day to walk accordingly to the praise and glory of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, Amen. Okay. Let us see what we can do today. God bless you all and you are all welcome to his presence. And I also welcome those who will be listening to the recorded version. May the grace of God, the peace of God, the fact that we spend time in God's presence, we, the fact that we, we have chosen to seek God, to listen to what he has to say, that, that spirit of obedience, may it bless us. That spirit that comes to the children of obedience, may that spirit come with blessing upon us, each and every one of us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, let's look at that. That reading. First John 3 from verse 1. And let us just start to imagine who God thinks we are. Not who we think we are, not who our parents think we are, not who our friends think we are. How marvelous is it, the thought of God towards us, that we should be called children of God? You know, a lot of people struggle with Jesus being the Son of God. They are like, oh, if, if he's the Son of God, then he cannot be God. Of course he's God. You are the son of your father. You are the son of your father. You have his DNA. So, God created us to be like him, to be his children. And we as Christians, a lot of us take this for granted. And while others who don't understand the will of God, the plan of God for us, they think it's blasphemy. When Jesus taught in his days to call God Father, the Pharisees were opposing him. How can you call God Father? So until we understand that God is Father, we will miss a lot. Until we put ourselves in the place that God wants us to be, until we know who God says we are, we will still be struggling because we will be seeing ourselves less than who God sees us. Yes, it is mighty, it is mind-boggling, but this is, the, this is something we need to, to, tr to learn to live into. We have all eternity for that. And so to bring us to the topic of today, the title is, That's Why I Came. That's the word of Jesus. That's why I came. I came that you may know who you are. I came that you may know who your father is. I came that your eyes will start to open. I came that you may not live under the bondage of Satan. That 1 John 3, verse 8, the, 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 the second part. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. What does manifest mean? That means it was concealed, it was hidden in a certain form, and now it is exposed, it's being manifested. So Jesus was in another form, but he made himself manifest in the human form so that we can realize that if we call ourselves children of God, then we can be like Jesus. He is God, and he manifested himself as a human being. We know that Jesus is the word of God. The word of God was made manifest, and he dwelt among us. So God changed his form from spirit to physical. So we should stop trying to, to uh, make it more complicated than it is. We see angels who are spirit manifest in the flesh. So we have to learn to accept that God Almighty who created those angels and, gave, and can give them the form of human beings can also decide to appear as a human being. That's why he is God. So he needs us to know why he came. There are so many reasons. We need to wash our minds, our heads. So the message from Jesus to you this morning is, that's why I came. What is your issue? Jesus says, that's why I came. 
to resolve those issues. We are truly little baby gods. We need to know. John says there, we don't yet know because this is, this is something that is gradual. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he did. See, we have to learn to, to understand that our life does not just, is not limited to the time here on earth. This is just like the, the beginning, you know, when a baby learns to take, take the first steps. This is just the beginning. We have all eternity to learn about God. And in, instead of allowing the devil to come and oppress us with sin, we need to understand that Jesus came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came to help us transform our minds. Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. We are little baby gods. Just take it. I am my father's child. And his blood flows in me. And so I see a resemblance to my father. You see people walk on the street and somebody will just stop you and say, are you so and so brother? Is your mother so and so person? Because they see a resemblance. That's who we are. Children of God. There has to be a resemblance. That is what God wants for us. If we know him as father, then we should know ourselves as children of the father. We cannot just call somebody father, father, and we don't see anything that, you know, links us or likens us to, to that person. So today, I want us to be excited because this is good news. I really want us to be excited. Grasp this. It is a fact that we are children of God. Jesus says, that's why I came. Have you got any doubt? That's why I came. And, you know, the book of John, you know, he, we have the, these three little epistles and we have the, the gospel of John. We have the book of Revelations. These books all do a lot to try to help us understand and accept this very mystery. John, John was always trying to bring the spirit into reality that we can see. That's the gift God gave to him. Yes, we have other gospels. They explain or they try to make us see Jesus in, in some ways. But this is the gift that God gave to John to try to open us up to the supernatural part of us that we will start to, to understand this mystery. Yes, it's a mystery because if you are not open into the spiritual, into the supernatural, you won't understand. And even then, Jesus says, that's why I came. Because he, when he came, he said, I will have to go because if I don't go, the spirit will not come. But he had to come in the physical to tell us, guys, this is possible. You can do it. There's more to you than you can imagine. You can produce a lot more out of you than you, even, than you can even dream of. Why? Because of that dynamis power in you. He who is in me is greater than he who is in me. You are always greater than you think. So when you think you've hit your limit, 
try again, you will see that you have another limit. Because you have God in the inside of you. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. That's why we need to be excited. Because of who we are. Children of the most high God. For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest. To start to manifest the, 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 the godliness in you. We read Psalm 15, talking about the, the char char characters of a godly person. Start to manifest. Start to transform yourself. Start to change your mindset. For this reason, Jesus made an appearance for our sake. He did it for us so that we can actually see who we are worshiping. It's not a figment of our imagination. He is real. The God we worship is real. So for us human beings, God did this thing. God became human that he might conquer for us what sin has destroyed or stolen from us. He came to restore. He made us to be who he created us to be. That's why I came. And now you look at yourself and, and, and then you hear all that I'm saying and you're asking yourself, how, how can it be? How, how can it be? How could it be that God sees me like, like what I'm hearing? Does he not know that I don't deserve him? Why, why would he even care for me? Jesus says, do you have that doubt? That's why I came. If you would just give me your time, if you, if you would just release your heart for your peace of mind, that's why I came. All those doubts, all those fears, all those insecurities. Jesus says, that's why I came. That you may know your true identity. Let us now look at, you know, one of the characters that we know very well. The apostle Peter, who worked very closely to Jesus. We, we know that Peter was a perfect example of unworthiness. If you feel unworthy, Peter was a perfect example of unworthiness. On one side, very, very zealous, but on the other side, completely unstable. And this goes to show us that we cannot do it on our own. That's all it is. You know, it's not about Peter. Peter is just a character in the drama to show that your zeal alone will not take you to your destination. It is the power of God in you that you will allow him to, to, to bestow on you that will enable you to be who he wants you to be. Peter was ready to fight next to Jesus. Peter was the first one to get a revelation of who Jesus was. Peter was ready to go to any length with Jesus. However, he, he did it with a human zeal. But God had another thing in mind. And God's plan for us is perfection. Jesus says, as my heavenly father is perfect, so, also, so you must be perfect. How can you be perfect on your own? 
He has to make you perfect by submission. So Peter, that's why Jesus had to change his name from Simon to Peter. He is the one who can change us. Yes, we have the zeal to, to love God, to work for him, but we can't change ourselves. We have to let him change. He knows who he wants us to be. Otherwise, we, we fight in the flesh, and then sooner or later, we are tired, and we'll be like, oh, that Christianity thing, I don't think it was for me. That's how people fail. That's how they walk away. Because they thought they could do it on their own. We tried with our human power. Sooner or later, we will be exhausted. We'll be full of self-condemnation. Oh, I know they're always preaching this, but I can't do that. They're always preaching this, I can't do that. Oh, maybe that Christianity thing, thing was not for me anyway. No, it wasn't meant for you to do it. You are meant to let God do it for you. That, that's why Jesus is telling you today, that's why I came. To help you. To change you. To move you from Simon to Peter. From instability to stability. I am the rock and I make you a little rock in me, on me. Because unless you stand on me, unless you are one with me, you will not be able to stand. No, no one missed it like Peter. And yet we know what God raised him up to be. You are more than you think you are. You are more than your failures. You are more than your insecurity. You are more than your self-condemnation. Just let Jesus do it because that's why he came. Je Peter declared, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus says, wow, nobody could have told you that except my heavenly father. You have the revelation. Two minutes later, Jesus says, you know what, Peter? Since you now know that I'm the Messiah, um, you know what the Messiah must go through. The Messiah has to suffer. The Messiah has to die. Peter is like, what? No, Lord, that cannot. God forbid that cannot be your portion. Jesus is like, get me behind me, Satan. See? Peter was zealous in the flesh. He wanted Jesus to live. He wanted Jesus to rule. And he wanted to rule and, and be powerful beside Jesus. All good. But let us do it in spirit, in perfection, according to God's will. Right there and then, Jesus is like, you are a stumbling block to me, guy. You, this is what I came to do. If I don't die, how will you be saved? Can you, is, you, Satan is speaking through your mouth, so just get, get behind me. You're not helping me here. One minute you say I'm the Messiah, and the next minute you say I should not die. Don't you know the Messiah came to die? Peter could only see on the earthly realm. And that's why we cannot point fingers, because most of us are like that. We have the zeal. But because you have that zeal, Jesus is telling you today, that's why I came. I will strengthen you where you are weak. I will teach you where you lack knowledge and wisdom. I have put my spirit in you so that when you listen, you will have understanding. That's why I came. I came that I might point you heavenward so that you stop thinking on the earthly realm. You just stop seeing the physical things around you. I came 
that I may, you know, tune your thoughts and make you aspire for heavenly things rather than earthly things. I came that I might teach you the characteristics of a godly person, like we read in Psalm 15. The character of a true child of the Father. God is our Father, and we are His children. We read that also in Psalm 95 this morning. I came that I may bestow my power and authority on you. I came to show you the way back home. I came that you might remember once more who you are. You are giant slayers. You are conquerors. Remember the story of David? And the women were singing, Saul slew his ten thousand, uh, no, Saul slew his thousands, but David slew his ten thousands. We are giant slayers. We cannot live mediocre lives. We cannot let Satan tell us you've sinned so much. That blood of Jesus you are talking about was not shed for you. That's a lie. That's what John is saying there. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Do not listen to his lies. He is a liar. If you are a child of God, then you do not sin. You may fall, you, 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 may, you will make mistakes. We will all make mistakes. But because you have your father's DNA, you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will immediately say, Father, I'm sorry. And you will turn around, you will confess. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive all unrighteousness. So you don't live in sin, dwell in sin, enjoy sin. That is of the devil. Mistakes we will all make. But because you, you are a child of God, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. You know that he was manifest. I'm reading from 1 John 3 verse 5 now. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him, there is no sin. So when you are in him, when you are your child's father, you are one with Jesus. You don't sin. Because when you do wrong, your, your conscience will, will disturb you. You will know. So you will immediately turn away when you have these godly characteristics that we are talking about. When the image of God is reflected on you. Daniel 11.33 says, Those who know their God shall be strong and they will do great exploits. Great things we do. Giant slayers we are. We need to understand. We cannot afford to just, you know, think that we are here as mere humans. No, we are not mere humans. We are baby gods. So I, I want us to be excited today. We, I want us, we can afford to be excited in this, our generation. This is why Jesus came. Jesus came and he overcame. Once and for all. And if you know that he came and he overcame and you are an overcomer, then let us be like David. That was Old Testament. I, I always said the Bible is pointing, it's not about David, it's about what God wants to learn from that character. Let us take, you know, just go with me in your imagination. Yeah? 
let's take a mental walk back in history to the story of David, okay? First Samuel chapter 17. Let us imagine young David. He was zealous. Yes, he spent time in the presence of God. He, he believed with his innocent young mind. He knew, he, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't care if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You see, he, he was sure of who he was. And we know in the Bible, God calls him a man after his own heart. Did he commit sin? Yes. But did he run back to ask for forgiveness? Yes. He did not commit sin and dwelled there. In his young mind, when he heard, his father just said, take this food to your brothers. When he arrived there, he saw the, the whole army of Israel trembling. And he's asking his brother, what's going on? His brother is like, what, what, what is your business, you little busybody? Where have you left those few sheep? Can I not ask again, David said. And then he went and asked, and they told him, this giant Goliath is, is tormenting the whole army since 40 days. What? Since 40 days, this uncircumcised Philistine, having the mouth to talk about the, the army of the living God? Who is he? I want to see that uncircumcised idiot. See, he, he trusted in his, in his God. And there was Goliath tormenting and cursing. And when, when he heard somebody is coming after him, the Bible said he looked at David. He saw he was a little boy. Said, Let me read this for you guys. Let's go to first Samuel. Okay. So first Samuel chapter 17 verse 42. He says, And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, that he reproached him, he, he, like he mocked him, his life. He said, for, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So verse 43. So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And, and, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods, okay? And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, that's Goliath the giant, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And he says, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Listen to this young boy. Look at his size and look at the size of the, of the giant. Listen to him. This day, today, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head, <laughs> take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp. So he didn't just stop with Goliath. I'll give the car carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That is spiritual boldness. That is spiritual boldness. 
So this young fellow, not looking at the size of the giant, told him, if you like, you look at my size. If you like, you think I'm young. You, if you like, you bring out curses from your mouth. Me, I'm not coming against you with anything other than the name of my God. This is what we need to do. This story is there to help us to understand that we can never do it on our own. Whatever God asks us to do, he is the one who will give us his name. That's exactly what Jesus said. Go in my name. It is his name that carries the power. It is his name that carries the authority. It is his name that makes the knees of the enemy weak so that a giant will cower before a little boy. And Jesus is saying, that's why I came. That you may know these things. That's why I came. And you may say, oh, but I'm not up to that. Remember, even David needed courage to face Goliath. Yes, he was, you know, he, he spoke in the name of the Lord, but physically he still needed that courage, not just to speak, but to do. He advanced, he ran towards that giant. He did not, you know, uh, take a defensive step. He, he took a, an, you know, he, he approached the giant. He found courage in the name of the Lord. And the stone, see, going to that stone again, Jesus told Peter, you are no more Simon, I call you Peter, because you are the rock. So we, are, we keep talking about our rock is the stone. David took stones. He collected five, only one hit the target. Because he declared that this day my God will give you into my hands. That's why God did not miss. David could have missed as a boy. But because this was God, God could not miss. And God will not miss in your life in the name of Jesus. We need to be courageous. They that know their God will do great exploits. Even when Goliath fell, according to what the Bible says, after he sent that stone into his, his uh, he says, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a, and a stone. No, uh, where he said, verse 49. Then David put his hand, I'm, I'm talking about 1 Samuel 17, verse 49 now. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. Okay, now imagine. Yes, he fell. But how do you know that he's dead? How do you know that he is dead? David still needed courage to approach the fallen giant because he declared, he said, my God will give you into my hands today and I will cut off your head. I will strike you, verse 46, and will take off and take your head from you. So, David still needed courage to approach the fallen giant because we watch it in films, don't we? They shoot somebody and he falls and you think he's dead. By the time you reach dead, you see their hand, they grab you and you start to scream even though you are just watching the film. 
But that is, that's why I say, let us take a mental walk back into history. Put yourself in this, in, in this drama. Imagine it step by step. The giant has fallen. He's a giant. One stone, a little boy hit a giant, he fell. Does that mean that he's dead? You don't know. But he had to take courage. And I can see him approaching the leg side, walking up. Imagine he's a long man, yeah, a giant. He, he approached from the leg. He went to his waist and saw his, his... You remember, David had no sword, so he took the giant sword. The giant could have moved by then. He needed courage. He took the, the, the giant sword of the giant and moved from his waist to the head and raised that giant sword and brought it down on the neck of the giant and cut it off. That needs courage. And that's why God keeps saying, do not fear. That's why I came. That's why I came. And you can imagine the tension when this giant fell. The thing that has been tormenting a whole army, adults, for 40 days. Now one little boy came in. Imagine the tension in the camp. I really want you guys to picture this. And now this little boy raises up the head of the giant in the sky. Can you imagine the uproar? Can you, I mean, see the fireworks? You have to Im imagine this thing that has been tormenting us for 40 days. Can you, I mean, really, look, the Bible says it, but you have to picture it. He says, now the men of Israel, verse 52 of 1 Samuel 17, now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted. We are talking about an army. So imagine the fireworks of the shout when David raised up the head of the giant. They arose. Imagine the army. They arose and they shouted and pursued the Philistines. One little boy gave them that power and that courage because he trusted totally in his God, not in his power. You have 10 men in a room shouting. If the place will shake, imagine a whole army. Imagine the fireworks, imagine the joy, the shout, the, the acceleration in that camp. And now they rose up and they pursued the rest. And of course, by that time, the Philistines knew they were in trouble because their leader had died. So they all ran. And the children of Israel chased them and plundered them and destroy them because of one little boy. So it's not in your size. It's not in your power. It is in the power of the Most High God. We have to hear what Jesus is saying. This is why I came. You need to be bold in the name of Jesus. You need to understand when you say, I have no strength, Jesus is saying, that's why I came. When you say, I have sinned, in sin did my mother conceive me, I was brought forth in iniquities, Jesus said, that's why I came. You say, but I'm confused, I don't know what to do. Jesus says, that's why I came. Oh, but I'm sick. I'm tired of being sick. I'm always in the doctor's surgery. Jesus is saying, that's why I came. Will you learn to trust in me? That's why I came. To bring peace into your confusion. 
be jubilant because he came and he overcame. We are free children of God through Christ, in Christ. When we trust in him and not, you know, picking and choosing. I came that the curse might be broken. Goliath openly cursed David. Did he cower and say, oh, this guy has cursed me, I'm done for. No, he said, you curse me, I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord. Today, that your big mouth, we will see who, 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 who is who here. The whole earth will know. He didn't say the whole of Israel. He said the whole earth. Because our God is the God of the whole earth. The whole earth will know that there is a God in Israel. And that is the God we worship. And that's why Jesus tells you today, that's why I came. That the world may know, that you may know, that there is a God. A God that can do and undo. Let us pray. Let us pray. Because Jesus came. That I might come out from under the curse of sin. Jesus came to teach me how to live a godly life and constantly display the character of a child of God. Jesus came that I may have power and authority in his name, even though with meekness. He is the servant king, bold, authoritative, but meek, the lion and the lamb. Jesus came to teach me how to abide in him, how to dwell in his holy tabernacle. Jesus came and made himself manifest that we too might manifest the image of our God and our Father. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. Like John said, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Father, even if the world despises us, we thank you that you know us. They despise us because they don't know you. If they know you, they will not despise us. So we thank you, Father, for your love, this unimaginable love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are abiding. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen.